Доброго дня, дорогі колеги. Рада вітати вас в українському. Uh, hello, we are happy to welcome you in the Ukrainian Crisis Media Center. And today we present the um, uh, of research on uh, historical narratives about uh, Ukraine in mass media. And today our presenters are Mr. Volodymyr Shiko, Director General of the Ukrainian Institute, Natalia Popovich, President of One Philosophy and co-founder of the Ukrainian Crisis Media Center, Rena Matvishin, a journalist and uh, analyst from Internews of Ukraine, Lyubov mm, Cebulska, mm, leader of the hybrid uh, threats uh, analysis group of the UCMC, and uh, uh, I am Ali Maliev, Deputy Director General of the Ukrainian Institute uh, Uh, upon request of the Ukrainian Institute and one philosopher's analytical company, Coruscant had carried out continental uh, content and context analysis of European uh, mass media issued between 2018-2019 about key events in the 20th century which um, had an impact upon Ukraine in the global processes. Um, of more than 44 biggest uh, mass media were analyzed from the UK, Germany, France, Poland, Ukraine and Russia and more than 7,392 materials were analyzed on the uh, uh, Great Famine, Holodomor in Ukraine, the Second World War, Chernobyl disaster, democratic processes and uh, uh, Post so in the post-Soviet space. Uh, so my uh, question uh, is to Volodymyr Shiko: Why this topic? Why, or why you decided to carry out this uh, project? Uh, we wanted to analyze the hard data and uh, evidence. Uh, uh, based decisions made by politicians, uh, uh, diplomat diplomacy leaders, etc. And we found out that there are uh, some distortions or distorted perception of Ukraine uh, among foreign countries. And uh, this should be taken into account uh, when we build up our work uh, in the international context in order to um, present properly the topics which are primarily important for Ukraine in order to uh, formulate the question correctly you have to know that uh, you have partially at least know the answer to this question to pose the uh, question in right way you should uh, uh, know the right answer uh, if, uh, in advance uh, forehead mm, uh, so um, in order to uh, send the proper messages, we need to understand how people get information about Ukraine. So the research which we are presenting today uh, is of importance because uh, uh, this is an attempt to, to understand how the informational uh, flows uh, influence uh, the modern uh, human being everywhere in the world, how that young personality is brought up, what influences its formation, how then this adult uh, human is influenced by the informational flows uh, in everyday life, how uh, much it is dependent on the relative 
relatives or friends of their opinions etc and uh, 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 all that is important for understanding uh what to analyze what to take into account uh, uh, when doing our research about ukraine uh, so natalia popovic will explain how, how we selected that mass media that influences on millions and millions of europeans who uh, and which shape the perception of ukraine among those uh, europeans uh, uh, for us it is important to, to uh, understand how to formulate how to build up uh, uh, proper uh, public policies how to communicate these public policies and uh, we have already planned uh, uh, the follow-up step for the next year based on this research. Uh, uh, I keep saying that uh, analysis and survey should uh, constitute the foundation for each policy decision. Natalia, with this, I would like to give the floor to you. Uh, you were among those who were the drivers of this uh, research, of this survey, and uh, you, uh, I believe it's just to give you the floor for presentation. I would like to thank to the entire team of the Ukrainian Institute, uh, to Volodymyr personally. Uh, I believe that all our efforts uh, were not wasted looking at the uh, conclusions that the uh, outcome of our research. Uh, Volodya was right when he mentioned that uh, in each country, the human identity, the national identity uh, is uh, being developed uh, during the entire life uh, and the uh, realities inside the country and also with the influence of informational flows. And uh, we try to understand and the uh, uh, relations between narrations, uh, narratives, uh, European narrative, Russian narrative, Ukrainian narrative, and uh, to assess and evaluate the context in which Ukraine appears in all that three narratives. Um, uh, uh, quite often uh, I uh, believe that the, uh, uh, with the scarce resources allocation of which is quite painful now uh, uh, for the um, work of governmental institutions uh, we should definitely know which uh, allocation which uh, investment would bring the best uh, the very best result and uh, also it is extremely important to, to keep in mind that uh, today under the crisis of democracy under growing uh, attractiveness of the uh, authoritarian regimes, uh, the diplomacy should act proactively uh, spreading uh, truthful information, build up dialogues, uh, uh, build up bridges between progressive forces in all the countries. And uh, this pr creative process should not be hindered with our uh, uh, imagination about the past, with our vision of past and the existent narrations of the past. Uh, um, 
uh, because this may influence the serious uh, um, differences in understanding such an important things as the human rights and the freedom of speech as uh, uh, the uh, f freedom of expression and uh, um, that's why one philosophy, Ukrainian Institute, wanted to understand the differences in interpretation of the major historical events in the 20th century uh, reflected in uh, the um, in mass media. Uh, I would like to uh, show my presentation. We had analyzed uh, more than 7,392 publications uh, uh, in 44 um, uh, media media releases from the UK, Germany, France, Poland, Ukraine, and Russia. And uh, uh, these were quite different uh, um, mass media, quite different publications. You can see the um, logos of all of them and can understand if you're fa familiar with them, how different they are. And the next uh, slide. Uh, this slide shows, uh, and the next slide, please. Um, we would like to share the major conclusions, and then I will give the floor to Volodymyr. He will provide some recommendations. So, uh, the major conclusions. As the players on this field, we should understand that narrative conflicts are inevitable in course of historical memory and uh, dialogue between nations. And this uh, uh, vision and interpretation shapes our mm, uh, vision and approach of uh, today. Uh, as of to, as of now, uh, of course, Russia continues to take Ukraine as a, a subject. Uh, it tries not to mention Ukraine in the context of the Second World War. Um, also. Uh, analysis of Ukrainian mass media allows to understand Ukrainian uh, position this year. We uh, these days we are uh, commemorating the anniversary of the great famine uh, of Holodomor from 1931-1933 in uh, the UK. Uh, mass media Holodomor was presented as a political intentional famine organized by the Soviet power. The only exclusion was the Guardian, which explained uh, Holodomor as a genocide organized by Stalin. In French mass media, they did not uh, define clearly that this was a genocide. In Germany, it uh, was uh, uh, some doubts about recognition of uh, Holodomor genocide, but nevertheless, the um, uh, more or less uh, uh, the same. Uh, although there are some differences in interpretation of Holodomor, but uh, there are uh, much in common. In May, we uh, 
uh, presented our research, uh, which proved that there was a unified narrative uh, bit, uh, of Ukraine and European countries uh, about Holodomor. The only uh, uh, exclusion was Rus Russia. Uh, Ukrainian word Holodomor is uh, used by uh, uh, other authors, for example, uh, the Australia, one of Australian research expressed hope that uh, uh, the such words taken from different languages will uh, come into other languages. That's why the world Holodomor will, instead of Great Famine, will go to other languages. And it is quite important to build up this uh, uh, narrative inside the country. Uh, also, there are some ter uh, terms which, uh, um, uh, as of now, are not uh, very much known abroad. For example, Ukrainian avant-garde. Um, as uh, an executed renaissance in uh, 2018 uh, uh, more uh, attention was uh, devoted by European mass media to Holodomor while in 19, uh, well, in 2019, more attention was given to the uh, Molotov-Ribbentrop uh, uh, Pact. Uh, the uh, then appearance of uh, Agnieszka Holland's uh, 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 documentary about Holodomor uh, uh, provoked a splash of interest to Holodomor once again. Uh, another aspect is that uh, importance, which is steered up by the um, leader, by the country leaders. Uh, for uh, the, for example, documentary uh, the price of truth. Uh, uh, prov which appeared quite recently provoked three times uh, less discussions uh, um, uh, than it used to be during the first presidency. The next uh, item is also important. We have to analyze our history by ourselves and not expect that this should be done by uh, uh, other uh, country uh, scientists. For example, if we want to uh, present either uh, Alexander Davzhenko or Kazimir Malevich and uh, present them to the world, we have to, um, we have to uh, understand what we think about them first in Ukraine and then to present our vision to the world. For example, as of now, uh, Alexander Davzhenko and Kazimir Malevich are not seen as the representatives of uh, executive renaissance or as representatives of the uh, Ukrainian avant-garde. Our research had revealed that a set of topics require more attention. For example, the Yalta Conference of 1945 is insufficiently studied from Ukrainian point of view. The historic narrative uh, about the USSR as part of the Eastern Europe and its imp 
impact on the Eastern Europe. Uh, is underestimated everywhere in the Western Europe, except perhaps the guard, one Guardian publication. Uh, also, there is a huge lack of understanding that aggressive states, uh, uh, when they are not immediately punished, uh, they simply postpone the problem, not resolve it. Uh, in uh, mass media, even now, there are uh, uh, some restricted topics. The, uh, 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 well, in Russia, inside Russia and in post-Soviet uh, uh, space, uh, continue the approach, uh, they should be uh, blamed, uh, the, which is reflection of the old Soviet approach and uh, distort the truth about uh, uh, Pact, uh, about Munich Pact. Uh, in uh, uh, in many uh, countries in Europe, uh, Eastern European countries always commemorated the victims of that pact from both sides. Um, uh, then the division of the post-war world in result of the Yalta conference should be rethinked and the uh, Russian or post-Soviet narrative should be overcome. Uh, 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 um, the topic of democratization in post-Soviet space uh, was the least attractive for discussion in mass media. Quite often we find that these reforms, they progress slowly, too slowly, that there are big uh, gap between the Western and Eastern Europe, which is reflected in the Eastern Neighborhood Initiative, but the, there is no deep analysis of the value level um, harmful impact of the Soviet uh, passed upon uh, Eastern democracies. Uh, in Ukraine, we observe that uh, up to 70 percent in Ukraine uh, 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 population is in Ukraine, they do not fully trust to each other and uh, in Western media you may trace up the narratives uh, which uh, um, uh, uh, say that uh, Russian Empire uh, always uh, continued to remain the Russian Empire, even when it was called the Soviet Union. What we wanted to see more, we wanted to see more reflections. Uh, we wanted to see reflection about decommunization, about the impact of the Chernobyl disaster on the collapse of the Soviet Union. Western mass media, media, despite attention to Chernobyl disaster, lack to um, 
um, identify that uh, um, tolerance to fake information coming from Russia, from the former Soviet Union, from Russia, it undermines the capacity of Western world to um, distinguish between what is true and what what is wolf, false. Um, Unfortunately, uh, they believe that the post-Soviet people are stuck in the old Soviet reality, uh, and the true understanding how a Chernobyl disaster undermined the uh, 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 the rest of uh, um, trust uh, to uh, the residuals of trust to the former Soviet regime. Uh, uh, of also, uh, all mass media lack uh, understanding that uh, um, uh, becoming the society of truth requires years and uh, dozens of years of uh, intensive work. For many years, uh, the West uh, kept believing that the communism itself and communist ideas were the main threat. Instead of uh, uh, understanding that uh, the biggest threat is a, an authoritarian authoritarian nature of Russia or a new Russian empire, which is based on um, the export of hydrocarbons, uh, etc. Mm, also, there are there is an outlook on the future prospects uh, uh, of Ukraine's development uh, from the Finnish way to the U.S. way, and uh, um, which present a wide spectrum of visions how Ukraine may develop in future. All those aspects uh, are interesting, are important, and uh, uh, revealing of incorrect or uh, um, uh, false interpretations uh, are the first uh, step uh, to counteraction of Russian vision, Russian perspective, which uh, continues to influence the um, uh, perception of Ukraine abroad. With this, I would like to give the floor to Volodymyr Shiko. Thank you very much, Natalia, for this comprehensive conclusion. Vladimir, how can the researchers and cultural institutions work with the, such uh, material of the research? Thank you very much, Natalia, for this comprehensive uh, report about uh, this research. The first thing we may do, we may read it. This report will be available on online resources of Ukrainian Institute and One Philosophy. And uh, this is a big volume of information we understand, but that we didn't cover all the media landscape and all the aspects that form perception of Ukraine and information about Ukraine in the media, but it is not less uh, comprehensive than we may think, because we mentioned the main points. Many researchers study and uh, lay people and decision makers are interested in this topic. For us, it would be really interesting to 
understand the perception and how information is provided. This is a valuable source of information for any policy, for any politicians who take decisions. And we hope that our colleagues in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and many other actors who deal with cultural and public diplomacy, uh, both in state bodies and NGOs, we hope that they will take this into account in the activity. I would like to propose several conclusions that are of interest for all of us for our work. First is the importance of the uh, colonial vision and strategic communication of the state and in cultural and uh, public diplomacy. Natalia spoke about this a lot. The topic of Ukrainian identity and uh, how it is reflected in the media in the West. For a long time, history of Ukraine was not written in Ukraine. It was not written by Ukrainians. There is a presence of post-colonial, even colonial vision uh, from the side of uh, so-called Western world. And uh, this is a vision on Ukraine and other countries of the region that sh the, uh, as the countries that should be democratized, they should be brought up to the upper level. And this is a colonial view, in essence, and many processes are lost. Those processes that uh, were ongoing, that these processes of democratization, human rights, processes to set Ukraine as an, uh, a state, as subject, and we should study these processes. We didn't appear as a state in 1991, and our civil society uh, didn't appear that year. Um, we see that um, we had long history of this, and uh, mass media, they do not know about this. And uh, also, it is important to uh, stress this identity of Ukraine. Uh, we should not, uh, I always criticize this uh, new East area, that this is something homogeneous that is interesting to study with some interesting Soviet past, but somehow unified, some exotic East. And this nullifies cultural peculiarity of Ukraine and in cultural diplomacy, and we do it as the Ukrainian Institute, and we believe that this is an important conclusion. This identity this the differentiation should be stressed, and we should bring up uh, the names of people, cultural, historic events that state important fact that Ukraine is a separate country with the sovereign territory, with its own language and history. And Ukraine, as a sovereign state, has the right to form our own historic narratives about our country and uh, um, should not always use those uh, that were done instead of us. Also, um, importance of storytelling in cultural and um, uh, public diplomacy. Um, speak, it is important to speak difficult pages of history, as, and we should uh, speak through human uh, stories, uh, because it will help us to provide emotional message about those events and to provide this information to foreigners, these human stories that are told um, by the language of culture. No official communication or no official political and uh, uh, state communication uh, may replace this instrument. And for this, uh, we should not trans um, provide traumatic experience. We should not force people to relive it. 
and we have such discussions uh, and on the eve of the um, observance of Holodomor Day, uh, we speak about important matters as how to speak about uh, the Great Famine. Uh, should we um, cook something from the uh, bark of the tree uh, because people were forced to eat it during uh, the Holodomor and we believe that such things are uh, not ethical and cultural diplomacy should find the way how to speak about those things with the due respect to victims uh, with respect to the, those people who were traumatized by the tragedy and uh, human stories should be provided and in Ukraine we have uh, witnesses, uh, uh, live witnesses of such events, and uh, they provide evidence. Uh, these are live voices of people, and uh, we should do cultural interventions, and they are more delicate, and at the same time they are emotional uh, with proper tone to provide such information in international uh, mass media. We spoke about manuals as a source of getting information and formation of uh, uh, conscience um, in order to provide uh, um, young people with information. And this is the next project with the one philosophy and Natalia is helping us with technical, with the terms of reference for this project. And we would like to see uh, how Ukraine is presented in the manuals, uh, histori uh, history books of several um, uh, European countries. And uh, also about the importance of academy in the formation of uh, narratives. Um, academia is important because uh, um, this manuals are based on uh, scientific discourse about history, about uh, art, about culture. That's why in the context of cultural diplomacy, the work with the Ukrainian studies abroad and international universities and expert centers, uh, think tanks, it, uh, is very important because these institutions, they are the source uh, uh, from which the information goes to the manuals, to mass media, to conscious um, and perception of millions of people. This aspect of cultural diplomacy is difficult to overestimate. In the process, we should understand that cultural diplomacy and public diplomacy is the field of for many actors, and among them there should be proper dialogue, cooperation, and uh, uh, they should act together, at least at the stage, at the level of understanding who does what and where we are moving, and uh, be able to say why we are doing this, not to have 10 different images of Ukraine or uh, different perceptions of the past or civil society uh, that uh, the information that is provided by uh, civil society um, and uh, they have different opinions, different views, and they provide them to uh, foreign countries. And at the level of state policies, Ukraine should elaborate this one voice policy concerning principle, the most important things uh, about interpretation of our past, and to coordinate the activity of different uh, uh, actors who are involved in these actions. And lastly, I would like to say about the importance uh, of continuation of research in the Ukrainian Institute this year. We have final stage of research concerning perception of Ukraine among uh, specialists in seven countries of Europe, plus uh, US, Japan, and Turkey. And uh, this is one more break and the uh, over comprehensive picture we would like to compose in order to see how Ukraine is perceived abroad. And here uh, we had a discovery, and Natalia mentioned about this briefly, about those names that are associated or uh, do not associate uh, with Ukraine abroad. Uh, Mal uh, Malevich was called, and uh, 
um, we uh, composed a list of names, events, cultural uh, persons, and uh, also those uh, representatives of different uh, ethnicities who live in Ukraine or connected, who are connected with Ukraine, and preliminary results of research show that abroad even specialists do not know such people uh, even those who work in cultural ma uh, management or uh, mass media and uh, not everyone knows even Malevich or associate him with ukraine and i won't even say about those uh, persons for whom several cultures or several countries compete there is a chaos in this area and uh, Maybe we should do a lot in Ukraine in order not just to bring something back to us, but just to declare what we have that is really Ukrainian in the sense. And I believe that we should speak broadly about the results of such research and we should continue because I repeat, uh, even we uh, only if we have proper evidence, we will be able to move this uh, cause further. So we have a big home task. Do we have Lyubov? Okay, good afternoon. Lyubov, I would like to ask you a question based on uh, other research. How this uh, survey, this research is related to the hybrid threats and uh, uh, how they could, uh, uh, how we could counteract to the uh, Russian uh, vision, Russian representation of the uh, related events. Uh, um, thank you. We analyze Russian propaganda and uh, in the context of this research, it is useful to analyze how uh, the Russian uh, ideologists uh, make a good use of the lack of Ukrainian uh, uh, vision and representation of that Ukrainian vision. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, this Russian perspective has a huge uh, impact on the Russian and Russian-speaking audience of the former Soviet Union. Uh, unfortunately for us, and fortunately for Russia, uh, Russia uh, knows quite well how to present Ukraine, what uh, perception of Ukraine to create, uh, and they keep saying all this, uh, uh, keep saying the same uh, for a long, long period of time. Uh, they present Ukraine as uh, uh, purely Russian territory, which um, is a failure state, which is now now has the fascist regime on it. And uh, speaking about Russian propaganda, you cannot but mention the historic narrative uh, because uh, historic narratives are uh, implicitly uh, present in all Russian uh, discourses uh, in education and in political, in cultural um, Russia uh, always preserved, preserved that re, uh, revision style approach to education, to uh, educational policy, to uh, the diplomatic policy, etc. And now they can do this even strongly with YouTube, with uh, uh, social media, etc. Also, it worth to mention how much Russia 
uh, uh, how how much money Russia spends on that. F more than four billion rubles were invested into cinema production or production of documentaries uh, uh, devoted to, uh, so to say, Russian history, and they have uh, have uh, the Victory uh, TV channel, which is. Uh, devoted specifically to the Second World War. This brings us to the issue of uh, topics in uh, uh, Russian uh, revenge-based approach. There are several huge topics, uh, mega-narratives, uh, like uh, the Second uh, World War, which is called primarily to communicate one main message that Rush, the Russians are the nation of uh, winners, and we are winners despite. Uh, uh, technological advances among our enemies, despite uh, all the mm, mm, uh, uh, treasons or uh, un, uh, un, untrustfulness of our allies. And uh, he, this brings in Ukrainians or uh, uh, the breeds, etc. And uh, in this context, they try to exploit the topic of uh, the Poltava battle. And quite recently, I looked uh, through the um, several magazines uh, devoted to the Poltava battle and uh, the uh, general staff. Uh, uh, officer uh, quite recently uh, discussed uh, the Poltava battle in, uh, of the early 18th century in this context which I just described. What is the biggest problem for us? We have to deal with this uh, 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 vision of this uh, uh, future generations, because the current generation in Russia probably could not be convinced in the true things and in true vision of the past. But we should build up uh, the vision of the future generations. And the only way to do this is to shape uh, our own vision. This brings us back to what Volodymyr mentioned. We should have the uh, clear uh, understanding clear vision who we are, where we are, and what narrative uh, about ourselves we would like to communicate to other nations. The, actually, the vision who we are uh, would be shaped even without us. If we do not step in and uh, take uh, a proactive uh, measure, measures. Um, uh, perhaps with this uh, I would like to make a pause uh, uh, and allow other speakers to intervene. Uh, uh, I would like to give the floor to Irina, who works uh, with the Internews Ukraine and uh, uh, is able to uh, add how do we 
uh, perceive ourselves and what is perception of us by others, how this research correlates with uh, the rest of your studies. Yeah, I should say that this, your survey, is uh, quite related to our Ukraine World Project, which is an English-speaking project uh, in the internews, and another project, Stories from Ukraine, which we had launched in September. Uh, on the framework of that project, we carried out uh, uh, a survey of narratives and topics about Ukraine which might be interesting for the world. Uh, we try doing that, we try to identify uh, what is lacking in the international uh, media space about Ukraine. We carried out that uh, uh, survey among uh, foreign experts. Uh, this uh, were foreign journalists working uh, um, and writing about Ukraine, either abroad or in Ukraine. Also, we uh, surveyed uh, experts from Ukraine working abroad. That was done without involvement of artificial intellect. We uh, questioned around 200 people, and uh, we uh, had have received rather interesting uh, data. We had identified uh, uh, those narratives which, uh, uh, which are negative uh, for Ukraine, like poverty, uh, the war, oligarchs, corruption. Uh, uh, these are the topics related to Ukraine, which quite often are associated with Ukraine in uh, foreign mass media. Uh, this goes along with many stereotypes uh, about Ukraine, which are imposed uh, alongside with the true negatives uh, by f foreign mass media. Uh, there are some positive messages that Ukrainians uh, are ready to express hospitality, that nature is beautiful, the cities are beautiful, uh, like uh, Kiev, etc. There are some narratives which are positive, but they are popular only among those people who had already attended uh, uh, Ukraine, and for them, they are appealing. There are journalists who have been living here for years, and those journalists uh, who uh, come here uh, totally unprepared, without any vision uh, what to expect. Uh, one my friend from Paris, a journalist who uh, covers uh, uh, the war in Donbass, he quite often keeps saying that Ukraine is almost uh, unknown in the West. Unfortunately, there are not so many um, uh, not not so many topics, which except maybe war, etc., which might bring Ukraine in the center of Western attention. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have a strategy uh, uh, what messages to send to the international information space. Uh, quite often, these are uh, confusing messages. Uh, uh, 
uh, Babchenko case, SBU case, uh, all that uh, messages they uh, are able to ruin the entire work of the uh, uh, civil organizations and activists who try to raise the image of Ukraine. Uh, this uh, s scandals and negative uh, information, they considerably harms and distorts the image of Ukraine and undermine the vision of Ukraine by uh, uh, foreign journalists, quite often they are very much confused where to find reliable information, what's going on in reality. So among those topics which we uh, had revealed based on the narratives, uh, uh, we found out that there are many topics worth to be covered, um, which now are covered very narrowly uh, from just one angle. Just an example, the ultra-right uh, movements in Ukraine. This is one of those top topics which uh, um, could be seen in mass media. This is the topic which easily could be manipulated with, uh, and it's easy to discredit uh, Ukraine based on that uh, uh, topic. Of course, this topic, if it is chosen, it should be covered uh, sustainably uh, in balance with proportion, uh, with bal well balanced proportions. Um, sometimes. Uh, uh, Sometimes journalists writing in Ukraine about Ukraine, they do not live in Ukraine. Many journalists writing about Ukraine, they live in Moscow. And uh, this uh, 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 Western uh, presentation of Ukraine is quite often built up on post-Soviet or pro-Russian a uh, vision uh, of uh, Ukrainian events. Uh, and uh, quite often, uh, our uh, messages about Ukraine does not match the Western mainstream understanding. The problem of our journalists uh, trying to uh, uh, trying to uh, present Ukrainian materials uh, abroad, are unable to present what they are writing uh, uh, from the Western point of view. They uh, are unable to present you to interpret Ukrainian context. Uh, we have to present the context, remind the dynamics of this context. Uh, you, in your uh, survey, you mentioned the topic of the uh, war and the Second World War. You should uh, uh, present Ukraine as a success of democratic development in post-Soviet space. Of course, there are problems, and you should not silence those problems. We have the problem of veterans, we have the problem of IDPs, uh, 
and all those uh, uh, issues could be presented in dynamics via development, via uh, the struggle. And, uh, these are the stories which we lack. I fully agree with you that we have to develop storytelling and our uh, renaissance uh, supported uh, renaissance foundation supported project uh, the stories from ukraine is actually aimed at uh, this purpose to present ukraine ukrainian history in the stories of uh, 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 individual people. Thank you to the viewers. Thank you to the participants. I would like to remind you that full uh, uh, review of this uh, research and survey could be found on the websites of UCMC, One Philosophy, and the Ukrainian Institute. And uh, co uh, I would like to remind you that quite uh, soon we will uh, involve this and include this uh, results into our everyday work. Uh, before saying goodbye, I would like to give the floor to presenters, uh, one minute from each presenter. Well, okay, let's start with you and then I will make conclusions. Thank you very much, dear colleagues. Your reflections are really valuable. Uh, this real, uh, Irina, it is really interesting for us. I really, I'm really interested in your opinion, and uh, we are going to work on this topic. Uh, and I would like to speak about what uh, Luba said about positive narratives as the only productive way how to counteract Russian propaganda and Russian narratives and this message is really close to me because, uh, you know, often communications outside, they are framed by what Russia does and we are in reactive position. We are trying to contradict their narratives and in the modern media, the first that is said is more important than the response and in our work we should take this into account and we should not only respond and contradict but to provide proper content about ukraine those narratives and stories that will provide an alternative frame positive, not in the sense that this is only interesting information that we provide good uh, information about us, but also that it should have added value. And those stories, narratives, uh, will help us to promote many activities, interventions that will provide benefit to us. This is one of the conclusions I would like to provide. Thank you. Dear colleagues, please, you are given the floor. Yes, you reminded one more aspect about the response to propaganda and propaganda. This is one of the mistakes. We believe that we should use our own identity to stress what is ours and to provide the first floor. We should not be uh, word. We should not be reactive. Uh, one more aspect. This problem that persists, people are tired of difficult topics and we are speaking about Ukraine in the context of uh, war with Russia and uh, 
Uh, there is some competition in the information uh, space uh, about this and this. Uh, also, um, it's not good for pro proper communication. We should speak about uh, us. Uh, um, we should position ourselves independently as Ukraine, as a separate country, as a separate nation, not as a post-Soviet country. Thank you. Natalia and uh, Lubov, you have one minute, please. So I will be the first one to speak. I would like to see inspiring examples, for example, example of Estonia. At some moment, they said that we are a small country, but we are IT country, and they started to develop the sector. Also, I attended courses at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and they spoke about diplomacy, about culinary diplomacy, uh, diplomacy cultural diplomacy, and they said they decided that they should show bright representatives to the world. For example, we have a bright composer, and we may speak about the sp uh, uh, we may speak about the country uh, of. Uh, uh, um, art and culinary art. Maybe also there are countries that do not sell uh, objects. They uh, communicate some ideas. For example, Sweden, they speak about morals, about gender equal uh, equality. And Sweden is the only country that is in the rating for the second time. Uh, stop the uh, list of the countries uh, of the world that uh, um, with the highest level of uh, good, with the highest val uh, values. So we should identify those things. Our narratives should be natural for our population. We should not invent them. We have them. They exist. They, we should form them properly. What we want to say to the world and to speak in one voice, if uh, this is natural, our population, our citizens will become ambassadors of these narratives and the country will speak for itself. We won't need to have excessive um, efforts from the state. Thank you. Uh, Natalia, thank you very much, dear colleagues. Uh, we thank Vladimir for partnership and for your reflex reflection, for your position. And uh, we thank uh, interviews uh, and uh, uh, also uh, I believe that uh, I understand Vladimir, we should not imitate anything. Imitation won't bring success in the world, and uh, uh, there are projects that are supported by the Ukrainian Institute, and there should be proper financing for the Ukrainian Institute. This is really important. Also, uh, Ukraine doesn't equal Russia, and we should have our proper uh, ideas, and we should communicate them to the world. And these can be different things, music, art, different uh, uh, projects, uh, um, folk music uh, groups, uh, and uh, they are liked in the world. And uh, there are different projects, different interesting things, uh, and uh, we uh, try to help them. And. Uh, also, uh, one voice policy, we had such a project and we should unite our efforts in Ukraine. We have less resources, but we may be more efficient if we unite our resources. Wonderful example is Ukraine World Project. And with Vladimir Irmolenko, we decided to unite the the databases of Ukraine Crisis Media Center and Internews uh, to provide updates to people from different Ukrainian cultural 
actors and there is a, a special um, platform and uh, we provide information to different people about what is going on in the country and they get truthful information um, and uh, it is important to unite efforts of non-state actors and also there should be proper synergy between uh, state institutions and NGOs and I would like to bring the example of uh, Denmark, they also reformat their um, uh, ideas. Uh, they are presented as a design country and they may also promote uh, different ideas. And there is the Ministry of Inter uh, um, Foreign Affairs and Cultural Institute and uh, a cultural agency and uh, Arts Fund and uh, Open Data Institution. This is an analog of Open U uh, Ukraine or Invest in Ukraine. Um, we should uh, unite the efforts and those projects that exist, they may be used with bigger return on investment because uh, we created uh, the legacy from online side to the left is about Ukrainian avant-garde. Uh, this was the first wave uh, and uh, this was uh, also about innovations. Well, so our site on innovation from Ukraine and innovators from Ukraine that we create uh, less about the best uh, technologies in Ukraine and uh, they decided to make some uh, materials that may be used in different settings in the media in order that the audience be able to get information about important things. Yes. And there is a sense of urgency about cooperation, about our joint work, our efforts. We should not get tired even uh, in such places as um, um, our natural partner countries, uh, Scandinavian countries, they understand the importance of democracy. And there was a forum last week about Russian-Western dialogue, and that means that Russia and the West, they resolve the issues, and other countries, they are trying to uh, make their puzzles, and this Baltic, Ukrainian, and Eastern European, Eastern, uh, the countries of Eastern Partnership, they are outside the focus. That's why our efforts are really important and our voice is really important in order to be present in this map with those, those things that are important for Ukraine. And I hope that our research will be important and we plan to have a series of publication to provide information about different elements of research. We thank uh, our Barbiera uh, for um, editing of all the um, editions of report and we thank the team of the Ukrainian Institute and we um, we are waiting for a continuation of the project about the manuals, history books in order to better understand what information is provided to young people about our history. Uh, so we elaborate this one voice policy and uh, we should also involve other institutions to this work because uh, this formation of our agenda of work is really important and we should promote the image of Ukraine in positive context. And uh, the Ukrainian Institute and our colleagues uh, from other institutions are dealing with this. So please follow the news and until the next time, goodbye.